a new area expansion, an endgame boss fight, combat achievements, 110 crafting, 110 room crafting, the desert questline being finished. 2025 is looking good, but we also got news on 2024 with the RuneScape Ahead roadmap. In this video, I'm going to go over everything, give my quick opinions on it, and get you guys up to date on everything. And yes, I do have a theory about the new expansion, and it might be Varlamore, but I might also be really, really wrong. Leave a like on the video if you do enjoy it, subscribe if you're new if you don't want to miss anything, and I'm trying to get to 10k by the end of next year. Now, enough waffling, my name's Chevalric, and let's talk about it. Okay, regarding 2024, I'm gonna rush through it a little bit, as a lot of the information was already known. We pretty much got details like release dates and names for everything that's coming out for the rest of the year. First of all, we're gonna get a new 4th Conjure on September 2nd and it will be the warrior that you guys saw in the release art of Necromancy. Next up is the Gate of Elidinus quest for the new skilling boss, a hard requirement to be able to do the skilling boss once it releases. The quest releases on September 16th and the skilling boss will release on the 23rd. And the rewards have not been shared but there will be skilling items that will help you with, you know, Really cool in my opinion and I'm really happy to see that the quest releases a week before the boss which kind of gives you some time to actually do the quest and let it breathe a little bit and also build some hype instead of what happened with the Sanctum where I kind of felt like you rushed through the quest because you wanted to do the bossing content. At least that's what it felt like for me. Group Iron Man is releasing in late October and early November which I'm really happy about because I was gonna go on a holiday in early October, so perfect timing for me, as with Necromancy, I had to cut my holiday short, because obviously I wanted to be there on release as a content creator. And yes, I have a group, but nothing is set in stone yet, so you guys have to wait before the announcement. 110 woodcutting and fletching will come late November, early December, and if you guys look closely, you might see a familiar face on the screens behind the JMods talking about it. Yes, that's me. I was really happy. Here's my reaction, if you're curious. That Woodcutting is me! And fletching follows up on our first <laughs> 110 release of mining and smithing. And while we're still in the early stages of development... We're gonna get a new tree, new hatchet, multiple, so we're probably gonna get a tier 90 and a tier 100 hatchet, which... I'm really happy about because I was kind of scared that with us getting the Imkando hatchet last year, they would skip out on like tier 90 and go straight to tier 100, but they didn't. We're also going to get a level 100 range weapon and a masterwork range weapon. So that is something new. We're now having masterwork ranged added to the collection of masterwork things. And I'm assuming that in the future, we might also be seeing masterwork magic and masterwork necromancy, which I think is really cool. And the quest that we're going to get in December is the first on the desert quest, which requires you to have completed the Fight Club and the Oath of the Devourer. These are quests that will directly be a continuation on the desert quest line, and they're going to be finishing that in 2025, which I think is really exciting, as I think it's good that we see some quest lines finished. Now on to the good stuff, 2025. First of all, 110 runecrafting and a clear skill to create magic weapons. We're going to get another skill increase as we pretty much expected and the next one is going to be runecrafting. But they're also going to kind of redesign it. I don't know if it's going to be from the ground up or if it's just from 100 onwards. But they want to add a way to create magic weapons as pretty much we have a way to create melee weapons, create ranged weapons, even necromancy weapons but not magic weapons, so using runecrafting for that, to me, makes a lot of sense, even lore-wise, as runecrafting was actually used to make staves, and staves are now in the crafting category, which I don't know. Curious to see if they will be moved to runecrafting or not, but we will see. Next up is Desert Quest 2, which I first read as Desert Treasure 2, but it's not, at least not as far as we know now, because right now it's just called Desert Quest 2, so we don't really know a name. It could be Desert Treasure 2, it could also not be, but we'll have to wait and see. There's nothing much to know about it. We just know that it's the end of the desert storyline. So whatever the lore there is, you might be able to make some theories. But now the big, big one that got me really excited is 110 Crafting. Yeah, no, I'm joking. I love 110 Crafting. It's going to be great. It's a new way to make high tier magic and ranged armor. And I really hope there's a better training method than Dragonstones as you unlock pretty much one of the best trading methods for crafting at 58 which you guys know that i'm not a big fan of and i really hope we're gonna get something new not just because i need to get 120 crafting 
Speaking of skills, we're gonna get a rebalancing to make skilling a more competitive way to make money versus PVM. Now, I am a bit kind of concerned about this as often it's not done correctly. I mean, we had stone spirits and wood spirits, which didn't really work. And then we also had the seed update, which kind of also didn't work. And I'm very curious to see what they're doing with this. But the thing that I'm most afraid of is that in RuneScape, usually it means like, let's say you make money. You probably have to put in some effort because, you know, they don't want to make two AFK. But that probably also means that the XP rates will probably be not that great because they don't want you to make money and experience. And I'm afraid we're going to get a really fun method that makes money and it's poor experience. And then we're back to the, the story of, oh, if something is fun to do in RuneScape, you get poor experience rates. And that is something we need to get rid of. And I absolutely hate it. But... We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. They will discuss it with us and I will make sure, or at least I will try to make sure that they know my opinion. I think they already do, but they know my opinion about XP rates also needing to be there. Guys, I don't want to sit there for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours to get like two levels or something. And that's just not fun in my opinion. Obviously, it's a bit exaggerated, but you get the point. But here are the big ones. Combat achievements. We're going to get easy to master combat achievements added. Now, if you're not familiar with what they are, they're pretty much challenges set to complete. And they go from easy to, well, master tier. Where pretty much you need to do things like kill the King Black Dragon 10 times to kill the Sanctum of Rebirth with tier 70 gear or something. Something really difficult for the master stuff. This literally adds hundreds and hundreds of hours to already existing content and is going to be so exciting and I really hope that it has a really cool reward that you can show off and say like, hey, look, I have completed all of this and I'm good at PVM, which I am going to try and complete everything and I am not the best at PVM. I'm not horrible, but yeah, I guess till then we're going to be working on getting more and better gear sets because I probably need to use the other styles as well. In old school, they have a Zuck Slayer Helm as the Grandmaster, because they have Grandmaster uh, tier reward. So I really hope we see something similar. And one thing that will probably have combat achievements is the new Amasked boss, which will be an endgame boss, will be towards the Desert Finale questline and probably is incorporated into it. I don't think you need to quest, but that will be like, I think at least a Zamorak level boss fight. And I really think that they will have cool rewards and stuff. And with what they've been doing recently, I am really excited. But the most exciting part out of all of this, and probably why you clicked on this video and wanted to know it, and the thing I teased at the beginning, is a new area expansion. I was pretty much looking at this reveal and I was like, you know what, everything here is really cool and exciting and I'm, 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 I'm really hyped for it and this is all really good content. But there wasn't anything that really made me go like, oh my god, this is insane. But a new area expansion? Yeah. Like, a new area expansion doesn't just mean, oh, we got a new area. No, that's new quests, that's new skilling method, that's new monsters, that's maybe new bosses, that's new everything. Like, th there's so much opportunity there to add in content and content and content and content. And that to me is exciting. But what will it be? Well, there's some sort of bird on there, which reminds me of the Quetzal from Varlamore. They're in the very early design stages, so I don't even know if they have an idea on what they're gonna do if we're maybe gonna get Zaya slash Varlamore because Varlamore is a part of Zaya. It's the new continent that Old School RuneScape released. I don't know if we will see it but that is pretty much just a guess of mine and I'm really curious to see how well that will age or how poor because with Necromancy I was really wrong too. Other people in my stream said it looked like a dinosaur but we'll have to wait. It's at least snow in the west and palms in the north and if you've been on Varlamore there is a mountain range in roughly the northwest with snow and there's also palm trees on there so that's kind of what makes me think it could possibly be Varlamore but quite frankly we don't really know there's also that one continent that I can't think of the name of because not gonna lie as you can probably tell I'm making this video just off the fly just wanted to talk about it but there's this one continent that has been talked about for quite a long time and been teased but isn't actually in the game it's not Zaya it's something else apparently it's like north or west or something from anachronia and like north of like port first matis apparently it's there and that might be it but we will have to wait and see but that is pretty much everything let me know in the comment section down below what you think about everything 
leave a like on the video and let me know your theories i'm really really curious my name is chevelric i'm gonna edit this video before protox releases this video and i'll see you guys in my next video